Hello YouTube, I have spent about 15 to 17 hours with the PlayStation 4 version of Shadow of Mortar and here's my opinions. Let's <laughs> So in this game you play as Talion, a human who has suffered a terrible fate. So in the beginning of the game, Talion and his family is overrun by Urux. This results in Talion's family being brutally murdered before getting murdered himself. But it turns out that Talion is actually denied death and bound to Wraith. Why? Well you have to find out for yourself. They bring much suffering. Can the curse be broken? Destroy the Black Hand and his followers, and claim Mordor. How? How do I do this? Your power. What do you know of the Black Hand? So as you saw explained in the video, this game actually has a lot of cool mechanics. One of them being that you actually can take control over your enemies and set them up against other enemies and control Mordor that way. That is actually really cool. One of the other cool things this game uh, allows you to do is actually explore as you want yourself. You're not forced to do any main quests or any quests at all. You can just explore this open world as you want yourself. That includes taking on challenges, killing Uruks, killing Uruk captains, just uh, salvaging stuff, killing specific enemies or doing side quests. These are just some of the cool things you can do in Shadows of Mordor. One of the cool new features to a video game like this in Shadow of Mortar is actually the Nemesis system. This is a system that allows you to keep track of enemy captains and set them up against each other in a kind of chessboard uh, kind of way. So you actually get to keep track of what's happening with your enemies and set them up against each other. And as you can see post, uh, by this picture, your enemy also has stats and weaknesses. So they have strength and weaknesses as you can see in this picture that allows you to find out what you need to uh, what you need to do to defeat a certain type of captain. You can retrieve this information by actually capturing another uh, Uruk and tell him to uh, give you intel on what a certain captain is afraid of or what his strengths are and stuff. So this is actually a really cool idea, but it has some small problems. Uh, one of them being uh, that you tend to uh, face the same captain twice, even though you killed him the first time. Because a captain can run away, and you can uh, fight him again later, and he you will see that he's scarred uh, from your last battle, and he will actually even tell you that he has met you before. But this tends to happen even though you killed the captain before. So that is a minor issue. But overall the Nemesis system is a great way to give your enemies personalities. So let's go over to some other features in the game. So the fighting system is actually really cool. It's uh, much like Batman and uh, Assassin's Creed. You, you just keep on whooping on your enemies until the pop-up uh, triangle or the respective button on the Xbox One and on the PC. Uh, which uh, means you have to counter him, but in this game uh, That feature is a little more forgiving than in a Batman because you can actually start off an animation and mid animation if the, the triangle or the respective buttons pop up You can actually just press it and he will automatically turn around instantly and uh, Fend off the other uh, the other one so it's much easier to keep control over what's happening in a fight. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. One of the other things the game has is a stealth system. This system is really simple and really forgiving, but that's not necessarily a problem. All you need to do is, uh, you need to cr crouch and get behind your enemy. You can even sometimes, if the enemy has noticed you, if he doesn't uh, get to do anything, you can still stealth kill him. And stealth kill usually takes down an enemy in one hit. Unless it's a captain that actually tolerates stealth finishers and blah blah blah. So, usually you get to, to take an enemy in one hit. So, remaining feature is now just 
I think it's just riding. You get to ride things in the game and the riding controls are okay, I guess. So, there's really not too much to talk about uh, about the riding process. It's pretty standard. You sit on, back on, sit on the back of an animal and you can fight and use that animal to your advantage in the battlefield. But I've sat around for a long time now talking about mainly positive things about Shadow of Mordor and you might be thinking, well, press boys, this isn't like you. Stop complaining. And you're right. Uh, a video game is almost never perfect. I think I've never played a perfect video game. So there are some minor issues with this one as well. As I said before, the Nemesis system is kind of funky. I like, I really like the idea. I really do. And it, when it's executed well, it is executed well. It works really well. It actually gives personalities to your enemies. But uh, when you keep seeing the same names all over again, uh, I kind of don't like that, to be honest. Uh, people say it's because they run out of names and stuff, but I think if you have the right uh, um, uh, random generator, you shouldn't run out of names, right? So that's one negative thing. And the other one is uh, the game gets a bit repetitive. Uh, it feels a little dragon towards the end and the story mode by itself is not really too much uh, of my interest at least. I think it's cool, uh, they set the tone right for a Lord of the Rings game, they really do, but it's not uh, big enough for me I guess. But uh, with that being said, there are mostly positive things to say about the game. Oh shit, I forgot about one thing, um, the controls. Uh, when you tend to stealth close to buildings and stuff. Uh, your character actually tends to get stuck to the building for some reason. So, say you're going around a corner and you want to go around that corner fluidly, uh, of course, because there might be an orc or an orc on the other side of that corner. But when you get to the corner, your character just sits there and he's stuck to the wall for some reason. So, I don't know if it's a, if it's a bug or if it's meant to be like that, but it kind of annoys me. But that's pretty much everything that annoys me with the game, so let's get to the final verdict. So the pros are great combat, NEM system is cool when it works properly, many things to do, feels similar but yet so new. Like I said, it feels similar to Batman but has a lot of new things to offer as well. It has great voice acting, I didn't mention this, but I feel, felt like I had to because it's really great. And the game is a little forgiving, so it's all about having fun. So just have fun! And now, over to the negatives. So the cons are dull story, can be a bit repetitive. Nemesis system, is it bugged? And the controllers, are they bugged? Like I said, when you get stuck to walls and stuff, is it bugged? So this game earns an 8.5, because this is right at home for me. Uh, if you like uh, Lord of the Rings, you'll probably like this. If you like... Batman, you will probably like this, and if you like Assassin's Creed, you will probably like this. So it pleases a lot of people. And you know what? It's available today, so go get it! And you can get it for the PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, Xbox One, and the PC. So that finishes my review, YouTube. Thank you for watching, and if you like the video, please subscribe, leave a comment, like, or whatever. I hope you enjoyed these reviews. I just tried to say my honest opinion. So until next time, YouTube, stay awesome.